Premier Stelmack. I was talking to Angus Watt just a few minutes ago, and he said, uh, tell uh, Ed that I'm one of his biggest fans. So there are some people who like you, Ed. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we do, too. We really appreciate you oh, coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And, and uh, our, uh, Lloyd Snellgrove is with you this morning as well, uh, who's the uh, Human Resources Minister. Uh, I guess finance. Now. Finance and, and Very important president of the, yeah. of the Treasury, Treasury Board. Board. That's sure. right. Sure. Yeah. We appreciate so much you've done. I've, I was listening to you with Leslie yesterday, and uh, there are so many questions. I know you just have a few minutes. Uh, but uh, we appreciate the fact that the province is going to provide some money for the people in Slave Lake, mm -hmm. and you talked to the uh, Prime Minister as well. Mm -hmm. Logistically, how is this going to work in conjunction with the insurance companies and things, and, and how quickly will those wheels get going, do you think? The insurance Bureau will have uh, people out uh, today. Uh, in fact, uh, they had a representative at Athabasca yesterday. So that process is starting. Um, then uh, the mayor will will be assisting the mayor with the recovery of her critical infrastructure, uh, meaning water, uh, natural gas, and power. Power will be... Uh, uh, in most of the, the community here soon. We will have to be very careful with the water. Uh, the water reservoir is down. We have to build up the pressure. We have to rechlorinate all the lines to make sure that it's safe. And of course, uh, Bruce, remember all the houses that have been burnt, shut off all the valves, clean all the lines. It, it's going to take a little bit of time, but uh, uh, that is critical. Uh, and then, of course, there are other issues. As people move into town, uh, the people that provide the support services, uh, working in a hospital, uh, uh, our information is that all the doctor's homes have burnt, uh, many of the staff that work in the hospitals, the teachers. So with respect to education, uh, Dave Hancock is working with the neighboring boards, and we, we'll, we will accommodate the students for final exams. Uh, but uh, some of the recovery in the critical infrastructure is going to take a little longer. I was reading yesterday, Ed, that uh, some of the RCMP officers who went and responded when, when things happened on Sunday night were wearing their uniforms, their houses burnt. That's all they have now. At and least uh, five mm. to six uh, of the officers that were, were uh, getting people to evacuate, uh, you know, knocking on doors, uh, getting people to move, um, and uh, there were a number of sustainable resource development officers or fish and wildlife that their houses burnt as well. Unbelievable. You Now, as a farmer and, and anybody who's done mm -hmm. that, as a lifestyle has had disasters come through and I mean if families go in a tailspin but you recoup you get back on your feet again you toured Slave Lake have you ever seen anything like this Ed? Not uh, no not in the years I served in government mm -hmm. and, and certainly not as a municipal official this is uh, the first for Alberta um, it, uh, it, it just tells you how much power nature has how quickly it can turn on you um, reports were that uh, they were holding the fire fairly well uh, using water bombers and helicopters and then when this wind came uh, they had to ground the aircraft because the winds were so strong we had four foot waves in Slave Lake there for a while they were hauling water from a smaller lake that had you know not as much dis disturbance uh, but uh, for the safety of the pilots they had to ground the uh, firefighting um, the, the, the air tankers and as a result and then in this wind I uh, the intensity mm -hmm. of, of the fire is, is what I, I just couldn't believe to see uh, a row of vehicles, just a row of trucks burn, and the next row is, of course, fairly intact. Um, a building uh, burnt to the ground, and the next office building is perfectly safe. And somebody talked, well, maybe about fire retardant. Fire retardant. Mm -hmm. This is bricks, steel melting. You know, it's nothing to do with fire yeah. retardants. It's just intense heat. I've never seen anything like that in my life. The people of Slave Lake, the, the first morning afterwards, the first man we had on the air, a man named Tom, said that uh, he, he got out with his family in their RV, and uh, he said, I can replace buildings, I can't replace my family. And the resolve they have is, is just, uh, it's sobering, actually, to hear them. Uh, I talked to quite a number of people in Athabasca. Um, you know, many are obviously still in shock, mm -hmm. not knowing what they're going to come back to. But uh, many uh, were thankful that their family was with them. Yes, uh, many were saying, well, perhaps we should have known earlier. Um, and that, those are questions we'll answer. Uh, but first of all, let's help the people that are evacuated, not only from Slave Lake, but the Slave Lake area. There are other evacuees in other communities as well. Uh, that uh, uh, we, This is... Uh, uh, I don't know, unprecedented for us in terms of the number of fires in a short period of time. 110 wildfires, and we have to remember here, and that's why I put the provincial fire ban in yesterday, is that uh, 
perhaps 50% of the fires start lightning and 50% man-made. Well, we haven't had any lightning. That tells us that uh, about nine of those fires were broken uh, power lines because the trees fell on the power mm -hmm. lines and ignited grass, but the rest were man-made. And it could be a cigarette, it could be an ADV. So this weekend we have to be very careful because our resources are stretched. We're getting firefighters from different provinces, and uh, it's supposed to be relatively warm. Uh, perhaps even uh, a weather system moving through. Hopefully we don't get any lightning. If we get a little rain, that would certainly help. But, uh, and, and to, uh, you know, to see fire travel at the intensity, uh, you know, many, many people think, well, it travels along the ground. It actually goes from treetop mm. to treetop. And when those uh, uh, trees <laughs> fire just the intense heat, um, it just, um, the pine cones are just like grenades, you know, it's just, break open, spread more ash. And so we, I just ask all Albertans to be extremely careful yeah. over the long weekend. Yeah, that fire ban, good call. Uh, and I had a friend who used to fight for us fires. He said it's called crowning, and the treetops just explode. You can yes, hear the boom. Yeah, yes, they do. And before you know it, you've got the whole area engulfed. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I just want to thank all Albertans for the outpouring mm -hmm. of support. Uh, it has been unbelievable. Your support, uh, the media has been uh, very good in getting the information out, and it's one way of getting the information out. We, we, there's no other means for us to get as much information out as we are through the media. So we want to thank you. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's also encouraging to Albertans that we're all working together. Cooperation is key in this case. And as you mentioned, top to province, uh, top to bottom in the province, everybody's getting on board now. The same yes, we are. Rolling. We're in every yeah. corner. Yeah. And uh, as I said, it's an unusual uh, first uh, time uh, of such a catastrophic event. We've certainly had our share in the past, but nothing of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. Minister Snellgrove, as Treasury Board President, are you going to kind of spearhead uh, the financing and things? from that end of things or is uh, we will make sure that the uh, funds are available for the people that actually uh, know what they're doing uh, yeah. when it comes to spiriting the recovery we've got some very very capable people uh, in government uh, we're able to uh, resource them and i know uh, uh, deputy minister manning has already put together a uh, strategic team uh, and they'll be spearheading uh, the recovery we'll just make sure that they've got the funds necessary to uh, to do it as quickly as we can. Yeah, it's going to take a while. I mean, it's not a matter of days, at least weeks, I would think, uh, uh, wouldn't it be? There's uh, probably several years involved yeah. to, uh, to get back to what would be considered normal. You know, and, and that's the other thing, too. I, I see we have home builders that said they're ready to go in and get started, but logistically, finding workers to do that, finding some place for the workers to stay when they get up there, I mean, it's, as you said, unprecedented. We're also looking at uh, what is the quickest way of removing all of the debris, mm. all that concrete, uh, the vehicles can be recycled, uh, and, and the metal and the steel, but it's all the concrete, the uh, sidewalks that are all broken up, uh, the brick, uh, all that has to be hauled away, cleaned up, and, uh, and started again. Uh, so that's going to be quite a task. So we're mm -hmm. looking at some options uh, uh, to where we can uh, either recycle some of the material uh, or uh, landfill it somewhere close to the site so that we're not uh, taking a lot of time hauling great distance. So that's all in the works. Uh, mm -hmm. It's all being put together. And uh, I know that we do have some experience on staff because uh, one of our uh, people on staff have uh, done a lot of work in the Kelowna fire and they bring that experience uh, to Alberta. Well, I know you're both very busy. I really appreciate you both coming in this morning. And uh, Premier Stelmack, you said that your dad told you, when you go into politics, don't ruin the family name. Mm -hmm. All of us in the province of Alberta appreciate that you go up there in person and you check this out yourself. So we appreciate you. all you've done well. Thank you. Well. All the very best. Thank Good you. Health. Stay Thank 29. You.